Okay, perfect. Good morning, happy Sunday. So I just wanted to um, go over some announcements for this week. Just to let you guys know, um, tax receipts for 2022 are available to be picked up in the Narthex. Also, current envelope users, please ensure that you print your name and envelope number on your offering em envelopes. World Day of Prayer, March 3rd, 2023, at 1 p.m. at Most Blessed Sacrament Church at 305 East 37th Street. So this year's theme is God's promise in the letter to the Ephesians, which is an invitation to active listening, which is the ground of our prayers. For more information, um, you can contact Pat Tarbett. Games night, Friday, February 24th is 7 p.m. It's $5 per person. And you can play Euchre at Mexican Train or Mexican Train and come alone, or you can bring a friend. And a refreshments are available. Black History Month upcoming activities. Next week, we'll have a guest speaker to be announced, and then we're going to have a luncheon right after. So please, um, it's very important to add your name to the list in the Narthex or call the office to let um, us know what you will be bringing. So on the topic of Black History Month, did you know Harriet Tubman? Um, she lived from 1822 to 1913. She courageously led many refugees from American slavery to safety, became the public face of the Underground Railroad in the British North America. She was born on Maryland Plantation and Harriet Tubman escaped slavery to become one of the greatest heroes of the 19th century. The most famous conductor on the Underground Railroad and she courageously led many of the people she rescued from American slavery on dangerous clandestine journeys to safety and freedom in Canada. Tubman helped these black refugees settle after their arrival and played an active role in the fight to end slavery. She became the public face of the Underground Railroad in British North America, attracting attention and funding to the uh, uh, abolition movement, and she was the member of the Salem cha Chapel. So, um, if anybody has any birthdays or anniversaries that they'd like to note, please stand up or raise your hand. Um, Bob Fletcher had a birthday this week. So happy birthday to Bob Fletcher. Do you wanna stand up, Bob? <laughs> uh -huh. Hey, not, no, yes. Let's, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bob. Happy birthday to you. Excellent. All right, so um, just a quick, quick note or mention um, for the Black History Month committee. Um, we're just gonna have a quick meeting after church in the fireside meeting. So I'd like to call up Christine Carlton now. Good morning. Before I start talking about our moment for mission, I'd like to mention the coldest night of the year event, which is being held on February 25th. We're doing a 5K walk to raise funds for th those that are out in the cold. Um, I've, I've noticed as I've aged that there are a few ways to handle the cold in the winter. One, you go south. <laughs> <laughs> Two, you stay in your snuggly flannel pajamas with a nice hot cocoa and sit by the fireside. Or three, you wear layers and layers and layers of clothing. A lot of people in Hamilton don't have that last option. And this coldest night of the year is to raise funds to help those. I was going to wear all my cold winter clothes, but COVID had a 20 pound effect on me. So we're not doing that this year. <laughs> 
However, there are people that are really suffering this cold, and I think you all remember that that cold snap we had about two weeks ago, where you didn't even want to go outside to take the garbage out or get in the car. It was just freezing. And these people are staying on sidewalks and living in tents and anything we can do to make it more comfortable for them until they can find some permanent housing would be appreciated. I have a table in the narthex today and there will be another one tomorrow or not tomorrow uh, next Sunday, so if you feel you can donate that would be appreciated. If you want to join us, Juliana is walking with me. If you want to join us this year, it's a, I think it starts at six o'clock, but I can confirm that on next Saturday night from St. Stephen's Anglican Church on Concession Street. Okay, now I will continue into the moments for missions here. This is Ashrafi's story. One in nine people around the world are going hungry, according to the United Nations. Since the pandemic struck, 40% more people in need of a nutritious meal have turned to the Fred Victor Center, a mission and service partner for help. That's one of the reasons why the 240 community gardens it runs are so important. Every day, we'll see 250 to 300 people standing outside for food. That is all the encouragement we need to keep growing and cooking. We donate most of the fruits and vegetables to our kitchen and our participants get fresh veggies and support from us, Fred Victor's Garden Center coordinator says. Today, over 200 families, many living in poverty, grow their own nutritious food at Fred Victor's Gardens, thanks to generous supporters like you. But there's more to the gardens than the food. Ashrafi says children learn where food comes from by gardening, and participants tell her they feel less stress and pain, have more energy, and meet new friends because of the gardens. People from different cultures, backgrounds, share their vegetables and herbs with each other. Through sharing, they come to appreciate each other. At the core, we are all the same, she says. The garden has changed Ashrafi's life. As an immigrant, I came here feeling isolated. My family didn't know where to start, but now I feel I'm standing on my own feet and I know the community. Every day when I walk home from work, everyone says, hi Ashrafi, how are you? They make my day happier. I feel belonging because of the gardens. It has changed my life and I thank you for your support. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Melanie this Sunday um, as she is leading our congregation in worship today. So let's welcome Melanie. Good morning, church. We will start our worship now with the lighting of the candles. Light of life that knows no fading. From all changes thou art free. Holy light that knows no shading. Shine on me, shine on me. The call to worship. Please follow along in your bulletins or on the PowerPoint for your responses. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come, come for his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. He is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. 
His mercy and his truth endures to all generations. Let us worship God. Please stand as you are able for the singing of the opening hymn, My Life Flows On. Let us pray. Most loving and merciful God, in whose law we find guidance, in whose love we find our healing and joy, and in whose will we find our peace, rule over our spirits in this hour. Empower us, and O oh God, to be open to the seasons of life, and give love generously to all in need. Grant us the silence of hearts so that we can grow in your word. As we go through this worship today, celebrating what we call Black History Month, help us never to forget our history and instill in us the willingness to share our history with our youth and others throughout the year. Now, Lord God, fill us with the solemnity of the faith of the Great Commission and also provide us with the means and the will to stay in loving and joyous relationships with one another and the world. Lord, we praise and adore you and we thank you for the joy we have in worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is 
I want Jesus to walk with me. Please stand as you are able. I now invite Jaron Melville to share today's reflection with us. Good morning, pastor, congregation, family, and friends. I am very pleased to be speaking to you today on behalf of the Crawford Cummings family. On this historic month, I'd like to draw your attention for a few minutes to share with you a slice of history that has made a way for our African people. Black History Month is an annual celebration of achievements by African Americans and a time for recognizing their central role in the US history. Also known as African American History Month, the event grew out of Negro History Week, the brainchild of noted historian Carter G. Woodson and other prominent African Americans since 1976. One very notable individual that paved the way for African Americans was Booker T. Washington, originally born a slave in 1856 and raised on a plantation in Virginia. His starting point in life was nothing short of hopeless. Yet, his hopeless con yet in his hopeless condition, he found hope in the possibility of an education. Up until he was a teenager, it was illegal for, for a slave to learn how to read. When he would watch the white boys going to school or reading a book, he secretly longed for this amazing ability. After the proclamation of emancipation, he found out that a school in Hampton was taking in black students who can afford it. So he packed his bags and made the 500 mile journey, mostly on foot from Marlene to Hampton, only to be refused upon arrival. But did he quit? No way. He slept under a staircase besides the pavement in Hampton and went back to the school every day seeking an opportunity to learn. He even offered to clean the school from top to bottom for no pay. His offer was accepted and when he had finished, the head teacher was so impressed with his thorough, with his thorough approach and hard working attitude that, offered, that she offered Booker T a place in exchange for his services as a janitor. Booker T worked all day and studied his books at night. Eventually, he graduated with honors, rose to become a lecturer, and rose to become a lecturer in that school. Booker T became so good at teaching and speaking that eventually, 
that he eventually was offered a post as principal of the Rundown School for Blacks in Tuskegee, Alabama. He took over the school and transformed it within a few years into one of the largest, most prestigious learning institutions in America. So impressive was the Tuskegee Institution, Institute that it, was that it was visited by the then President McKinley of the United States. Booker T. Washington dined in the White House, received an honorary degree from Harvard University, was offered up to $50,000 to speak at conventions, rallies. He addressed thousands of whites in political crusades, wrote his own autobiography, and delivered thousands of black people into business, trades, professions, and employment. He unfortunately passed in 1915 as an African-American hero. I said all that to say this, your starting point in life does not determine where you end up in life. What determines where you end up is whether or not you find the key that unlocks the key that unlocks your fullest potential and use it to the best of your ability. Thank you. Thank you, Jeron. Let us all pray. Where there is cruelty, may I model your kindness. Let's pray together. Where there is despair, may I model your hope. Where there is anxiety, may I model your comfort. Where there is loneliness, may I model your presence. And where there is strife, may I model your peace. Amen. This morning we will be blessed with a solo by Anaya and she will be accompanied by Azra on the piano. Harriet Tubman was an American abolitionist and social activist. Born into slavery, Tubman escaped and subsequently made 13 missions to rescue approximately 70 slaves, including family and friends. Using the network of anti-slavery activists and safe houses known as the Underground Railroad, the song I am about to sing is perhaps one of the most enduring songs. Swing Low Sweet Chariot, is said to be Harriet Tubman's favorite. If a, if a slave heard this song in the South, they knew they had to prepare for escape. The band of angels referred to the conductors of the Underground Railroad, the sweet chariot who would soon come South, swing low to guide the slave North to freedom, carry me home.
Great job, Anaya and Azriel. So I'm the following scriptures. The first one is Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 to 20. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity, and if you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord, you, Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today, you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord you, your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give you to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Psalm 119 verses 1 through 8. Happy are those who, whose way is blameless, who walk in the law, the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your uh, precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that may ways may be steadfast in keeping your status, statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all of your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will, deserve, I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now, you are still not ready. For you are still of the flesh, for as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the, the flesh, and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What is, then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted Apollo's water, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 37. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or a sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or a sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of time, sorry, the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and, other, um, and offer your gift. Come. Uh, to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on your way to uh, court with him, or your accused may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you'll tell never, you will never get until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, and you shall not commit adultery. 
But I say to you that everyone who looks to a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If you a right eye causes you to sin, he, uh, hear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand accuses, causes you to sin and off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than your whole body to go into hell. It also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, uh, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries and divorces women commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it said those of ancient times. You shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows that you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, its um, footstool, or to, by Jerusalem, for it's the city of the great king. And to not swear by your head, to, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes yes or no or no anything more than this comes from the evil one
Good morning, sisters and brothers in Christ. I extend a warm welcome to all of you, those present this morning, those who have joined us on Zoom, and those who will be watching later on YouTube. We are happy you are worshiping with us. Before going any further, I will take this moment to thank all those who assisted with the planning of this month's services. I wish to also thank those who have facilitated this morning's worship. Juliana for making the announcements and reading the scriptures, Jaron for the reflection he prepared and presented, Anaya and Azrael for their special item, Richard and the choir for ably leading us in song, the audiovisual technicians for all they do, Pam for preparing and operating the PowerPoint, Meredith for all you do, including getting the bulletins ready, the lovely ladies in charge of coffee hour today, and last but not least, thanks Reverend Tassica for so, so willingly allowing me this opportunity. Thank you all. I trust I didn't miss anyone. Thank you also for the warm welcome this morning. It is certainly a pleasure to be in the house of God and an honor for me to be able to share with you in this way. My topic today is the refining influence of affliction. The scripture I'm using this morning comes from the book of Job, chapter 23, verse 10, and it reads, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Let us pray. This holy hour, we bring ourselves into your presence, O God. I, on my own, am an empty vessel. I submit myself to you. Use me all for your glory, O God. And now may the Spirit of God rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, and in our living. Amen. I'm sure we all know February is dedicated as Black History Month. Perchance, some of you might be asking, what is Black History? In short, Black history refers to the stories, experiences, and accomplishments of people of African origin. The commemoration of Black History Month in North America dates back to 1926. Celebrations of Black history began in Canada shortly thereafter. During the early 1970s, the week became known as Black History Week and was expanded into Black History Month in 1976. In December 1995, the House of Commons officially recognized February as Black History Month in Canada, following a motion introduced by the first African Canadian woman elected to Parliament, the Honorable Jean Augustine. Black History Month is a time to learn more about many important contributions that Black Canadians and their communities have made to the history and continued growth of this country. And so, it is in light of this that I begin my message today with little bursts of history. The role of Black Canadians in Canada has generally been unheeded as a key part of Canada's history. However, it is a fact that African people were once enslaved in this territory now known as Canada. It is estimated that more than 4,000 black men, women, and children were, were held in slavery in what is now Quebec, Ontario, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, and New Brunswick as early as 1628. Upper Canada passed the Limited Act Against Slavery in 1793. And in 1834, slavery was abolished in most of the British Empire, including the, the Canadian colonies. In the early 1800s, Canada and the northern part of the United States gained a reputation for being a haven for the enslaved. Canada had the code name Canaan, 
Seeking freedom, many enslaved people traveled secretly to Canada and other regions in North America where slavery was abolished through a concealed network known as the Underground Railroad. It is a fact that segregated schools existed in Canada. Beginning in 1850 in Upper Canada, a provision was made for the establishment of separate schools for the Black community. In 1886, Ontario clarified its law so that such establishment could only occur after an application had been made by at least five Black families in the community. The majority of segregated schools were located in Essex and Kent, in, and Kent counties in Ontario, where Black communities had been established during the Underground Railroad era. It is a fact that race riots existed in Canada. The first recorded race riot in North America was in Nova Scotia. The Shelburne race riots started on July 26, 1784, when a group of white loyalists demolished the home of David George, a black Baptist preacher who was baptizing other white loyalists. The rioting mob tore down the houses of 20 other free black loyalists living on the church's property and physically attacked George. This riot lasted for about 10 days. The story of Viola Desmond, a Canadian civil and women's rights activist and businesswoman of Black Nova Scotian descent, who refused to sit in the Blacks only section of a movie theater, predates the, his the story of Rosa Parks, a Black civil rights activist who refused to sit in the Blacks only section of the bus. Now a little closer to home. Hamilton became an important station on the Underground Railroad during the early 1800s as African Americans sought freedom from slavery. It is recorded that by the 1830s, two distinct settlements had developed. Little Africa, located on Hamilton Mountain in the area of Concession and Upper Wentworth Streets, and another around St. Paul's African Methodist Episcopal Church on Cathcart Street. The black community of the 19th century uh, in Hamilton consisted of men and women who farmed, owned businesses, and worked as shoemakers, plasterers, carpenters, blacksmiths, tailors, seamstresses, teachers, and cooks. Black Canadians and their communities have been an integral part of shaping Canada's history and identity. Black History Month offers us all an opportunity to recognize and acknowledge the contribution of so many and to recognize Black history as our history. Let me remind you here that I'm using Job chapter 23, verse 10, as the text for my message. It says, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. The book of Job is one of the most celebrated pieces of biblical work, not only because it explores some of the most intense questions humans ask about their lives, but also because it is particularly well-written. Job was a wealthy man living in a land called Uz, with his family and extensive flock. He was blameless and upright, and he feared God and shunned evil. One day, the angels and Satan appeared before God in heaven. God boasts to Satan about Job's goodness, but Satan argues that Job was only good because God had blessed him unrestrainedly. Satan challenged God that if given permission to punish the man, Job will turn and curse God. God allowed Satan to torment Job to test this audacious claim, but he forbade Satan to take Job's life in the process. Job was suddenly plagued with disasters that took away all he held there. Notwithstanding his difficult circumstances, and although he anguished over his plight, he stopped short of accusing God of injustice. As I prepared this message and pondered Job's circumstances, 
I thought that the comparison affliction is to Job as fire is to gold holds quite true. Refining with flame is one of the oldest method, methods of refining metals. This form of refining involves a craftsman sitting next to a hot fire, reaching temperatures in excess of 1,000 degrees Celsius, with molten gold in a crucible being stirred and skimmed to remove the impurities or dross that rose to the top of the molten metal. In chapter 3 of the book of Job, it seemed Job was at his lowest point possible, rock bottom, if you will. He was certainly pained as the reality of his situation dawned on him, but he does not curse God. Rather, he cursed the day of his birth. Ever so often, I think about our forefathers and what they had to suffer. Slavery, inequality, abuse, racism, to name a few. But because of their endurance, I and we can achieve and live in a country where we can exercise our freedom. I can only imagine that they must have felt like Job at times. They must have felt like they hit rock bottom. As I consider Black History Month and the scripture for my message, I could not help but note a connection between Job's suffering and what we as Black people endured for 200 plus years, leading to this very moment in time. There are times, my sisters and brothers, that God must bring us down before he can bring us up. The feeling of being at our lowest point is tough. I can personally attest to that, and I am sure many of you can as well. The sadness over the loss of a loved one or the disappointment of a broken relationship or life situations, like having to scratch together pennies to buy a meal or pay a bus fare to get to work would rock any world. Beloved, we must note here, however, that there are great lessons to be learned when we find we are at our lowest state. It is there, at our lowest point, that God allows us to be stripped bare. It is there, at rock bottom, that we, like the Reverend Marie-Claude Manga, a black female French-speaking pastor, serving in an Anglophone majority and featured in our bulletin last week, learn how to lean and depend on God. It is there, at our lowest point, that God is able to work with us. It was there, at rock bottom, that we began to sing songs like Steal Away to Jesus, or Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen, or Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. It is there, at our lowest point, that the devil will talk and tell us to take matters into our own hands, that violence is the answer. Sisters and brothers, but God, God at rock bottom will also speak to us, telling us to protest peacefully, to love our neighbors as ourselves. It is there at our lowest point that God begins to prepare us for our journey upward. It is there at rock bottom that by God's grace, we realize that rock bottom is a place to build. Job was a man that knew his God and trusted God's word, even though he did not understand why the furnace appeared to be heated 10 times hotter. The furnace of Job's appointment was neither a consequence of God's abandonment nor a reflection of Job's wrongdoings. His weight of suffering was a refining ministry that God had permitted to overtake his faithful servant with a purpose in view. 
the fire of affliction, though always, always painful, can either singe a servant of God or it can become a purifying tool that refines character and owns us into the man or woman that the Lord desires us to be. You see, my white, red, brown, or black sisters and brothers, we do not have to look like what we have been through when we understand that the will of God is to rid each of his children of all the accumulated dross and clutter of our lives, burning away all that is of me, myself, and I. We are better equipped to face and deal with the purifying influence of affliction in the knowledge that the tests and trials that we are facing are but for a moment. Let us trust God's word of truth, knowing, believing that he knows the way we take and when he has tested us in his furnace of affliction, we will come forth as pure gold. Shall we sing the next hymn prayerfully as we remain seated? Kumbaya. Let's turn to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear God, we lift up and thank you for our black sisters and brothers who have shaped history. We thank you for the opportunity to learn and reflect, particularly during this month. May we be generous in our love of others 
as we work toward ending racism and injustice, thereby creating communities where all humans thrive. Father, it's been a challenging time for so many people around the world. From battling COVID and all its strains, to political and social unrest, to natural disasters, we have seen and been through so much suffering. God of compassion, we join our hearts to you, for it is you who go before us amongst the trouble, within the grief and brokenness and conflict. O oh God, we pray that you will walk beside the widows, the orphans, the poor, and the hopeless. Father, you who reign above, you see the earth filled with love and beauty, yet a world shrouded in darkness. We pray for this world to be clothed in your saving grace. Have mercy and help us, O oh God. Remind us again how to be your hands, your feet, your voice, and your love to the world. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. Our life in this church continues to be open to the Spirit's work within us, through us and among us. And so in gratitude for, for God's presence, let us receive our tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give ourselves to you. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and, and influence, we pray. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
let us go now to seek a place in a community where all people are known, acknowledged, and treated with respect, where all people work toward love, fairness, and understanding. Let's go to proclaim the priceless work of all people. Go now in peace. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone.